The circumstances of the birth of Jesus, as told in the Gospel of Luke, point to the life of one who will have nowhere to lay his head, born as he is in a borrowed stable. But they also indicate that the child will be a saviour. In fact, he will be the Messiah, the Lord, far outshining even the emperor in Rome. But for the time being, however, the birth is announced only to shepherds. They alone hear the heavenly host singing an angelic song, which echoes the cry of the seraphim in Isaiah chapter 6. Heaven and earth are indeed full of God's glory. Nativity plays and popular culture often cast angels as female, when in fact throughout the Bible angels are encountered as male messengers from God. However, there is another possible gender confusion in the nativity story, and this time it's one which goes the other way. In traditional Bedouin societies, women often looked after the flocks, and it's certainly possible that the shepherds who rushed to the scene of a newborn baby were women. Of course, at the end of Jesus' life, those who remain with him to the very end are the women, and the first witnesses to the resurrected Christ is also a woman. Add all this to the fact that his mother is a teenager and unmarried, and take it in a context where women were more commonly regarded as property than persons, and a peculiarly liberating picture of Jesus emerges. This is a Messiah for all people, not just for powerful men. He is a Messiah for those whom society devalues, a Messiah for shepherds and refugees, for single parents and frightened fathers, every bit as much as he is a Messiah for the wise, the educated and the prosperous.